here's our definition for array. It's part of a line that starts at an endpoint and goes on infinitely in one direction. This here is line AB. This here is line AB. And so part of line AB is ray AB, where it would start at an endpoint and go on infinitely in one direction. And then so if I draw right on over that, I'm going to draw it where it is that this point A is where it is that it starts and then it continues on in one direction. And actually it's not quite it there. This is in blue there. There we go. And so it goes on in one direction. That would be what in what I wrote in blue there is that ray. It's just part of that line. It's not this part of the line. In other words, it doesn't go on infinitely in this direction, but it does go on infinitely in this direction here. That's ray AB, and this is how we write ray AB. And again, what we say is we say ray AB. This also is a ray then. You'll notice that this ray just happens to go, looks like up and down. We would call this ray DE, where point D is the endpoint of that ray. And then it goes on infinitely in one direction. That's that endpoint of the ray. And again, we would write it D, E, and you notice that it looks exactly the same still. You don't change that ray just because of the direction that it's going. In other words, if this was a ray as well, you do not all of a sudden rewrite anything different than what you wrote before. You would still write ray F because that's the endpoint. The endpoint comes first. And that's hugely important. In other words, if I said ray gf, that would actually go off in this direction and continue off in this direction. This starts with the endpoint f, and it's um, ray fg. You'll notice when I write it out, I still write it out the exact same way um, as all those other ones. This here is ray rt, or I could call it ray r. Now, if I had made another ray from the R here, and we had this point right here, and we'll call this point C, then this other ray that I have now used that same vertex for is ray, and same point for is ray RC, or ray R. And so this point right here is called the vertex of what we call an angle. I now have this angle, T, R, C, and you'll notice the angle is two rays that are connected by that common endpoint, R, called a vertex. So I can name this angle. I can name it by its points, and you'll notice that I go T, R, then C. So angle, T, R, C, and that is the symbol for an angle. I can also name it by the three points in the other direction where it's C, R, T. And I will say angle C, R, T. I'm going to write what you would say so that you remember. That's angle T, R, C, or angle C, R, T. There is one other way I can name this angle, and that is I can name it just by its vertex, which should be angle R. What I can't say is I cannot just mix up the letters any which way I want. I can't just say angle R, C, T, nor can I say angle T, C, R. You'll notice with when I was naming it with three letters, angle T, R, C, and angle C, R, T, that vertex is right there in the middle. It's because it's the order that you see there for those points. And again, this point R that's called the vertex of our angle. Oftentimes, you'll see these types of questions as we're naming angles. It'll say, name the angle three ways. And then so this angle has three different names. We use that angle symbol. And again, um, the angle symbol never changes based on the angle. In other words, if we had this angle here, you don't change the symbol for the angle, nor do you change it if you had this type of angle either. For this angle, we can call it by its vertex. Which of these points, is it D, E, or G, that is the vertex? It is point 
E, so we can call it angle E. E is what we call our vertex. What's another name that we can give this angle? We can call it angle D what? Angle D E G. And finally, we can also call it angle what? G E D. And then so now I have three ways that I have named this angle. You'll also notice the other thing that I do not do with the angle symbol itself is that I don't extend this out in either direction. If I was asked to draw an angle, I make sure that it is rays and that it extends infinitely in either direction. Those are two rays that are meeting at that end point and that, that vertex, that's the end point of both of those rays that is, but they're meeting at that vertex point E. You'll notice again, the E's are right there in the middle and or we can identify it just by its vertex. Can't say angle D, can't say angle G, but you can say angle E just by its vertex. Let's look at one last angle. Let's go ahead and review and go for one last angle. This angle, if we name it just by its vertex, is angle what? B. Point B is the what? Is the what of this angle? Point B is the vertex of this angle. How many rays make up this angle? How many rays make up this angle? Did you say two? Name those rays for me. Name those rays for me. One of those is ray B L and the other ray is ray B Q. And so that's how it is that I would write that there. The last thing is to name this angle three ways. Pause the video, copy the angle down, and name the angle three different ways. Did you come up with angle B, angle QBL, and angle LBQ? That's how we name the angle three different ways, by its vertex and by those points. That's there. all you need to know about angles and rays and about naming them. What do we say here again? This is what? Did you say ray BL? This is ray BQ. Angle B. Point B is that vertex. <laughs> I guess I did give you one of those ways that we could name that there, right there.